In this video, we're going to take a look at Califolio rubies. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion. This changes tone significantly depending on what pen, the size of the nib, how wet it is, and a lot depending on what paper it is. It's very unpredictable as an ink. Now on nice paper, it can shade decently well for a red. Not so much on cheap paper, but the cheap paper, I don't even want to call it all cheap. It's not made for fountain pens. The tone variation can be much more significant. In its darker tone, it's a very dark rich as a tone, and I like it a lot, especially when you see it on the Clairefontaine. While this can shade, it I wouldn't count on it, especially when you're using that cheap paper. Now, I don't see using this a whole lot because the use of red for me more happens on cheap paper in grading, though I don't use red very often for that. Now, if I was to use it on better paper on some of my own writing just to add into notes that I have, then I think the tone that's there is really nice, very enjoyable, rich, beautiful color. And with that part, I like it a lot. Where I don't like it is on anything other than premium papers. And a lot of people on this channel really do worry about how it's going to perform on all of those other papers. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya, their version one with the Fountain Pen Revolution Flex Nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the standard Noodler's nib, you see it does give some shading. It's a beautiful tone here. It shades fairly well. You're going to see it in the word mathematics on the second line, in the word wasting on the top line, and is a little bit lighter than the word decided to the right of it on the second line. It shades very nice, and again, those darker tones are great. We get no spreading at all. We get no feather. It's beautiful. The gold nib, which seems to write just a little bit wetter than the standard one, is a tad bit darker and really gives that rich dark tone I was talking about. Love how it's looking here. We're not getting any feather, no spread. That shading is definitely happening. You see it a lot. In most words, you start to see that really dark tone. Almost wish I could purely get that tone. The Fude nib is significantly lighter than both of the others on the page. Now, we're not getting any feather. We're not getting any spread. We are seeing some shading. When the shading happens, it's not going to that super rich dark tone, but it is getting much darker. It's definitely there. I like writing with Fude nibs. This pen, for some reason, I struggle with. So you're going to see some bad penmanship with me with this with the Fude nib. Looking at the standard Noodler's nib, we do get a little bit of feathering all over it. It's very consistent feathering the entire time. Back up, back up, fix that. 
to have a range of experience with the sink, all of the writing samples are done with a Noodler's Ahab with an extra fine nib. A Noodler's Ahab with a medium nib. A Noodler's Ahab with a 1.1 stub nib. The next writing sample is done in a Field Notes steno notebook. Looking at the standard Noodler's nib, it is significantly lighter than we had on the Clairefontaine. We do get feathering all over it, fairly consistent tiny feathers the entire time. We're also experiencing a little bit of spread. We're not gonna get any kind of a shading here. This red tone, I'm not really much of a fan for with how this is looking. Looking at the gold nib, it is darker than we got with the standard nib. It does still feather. It does still have a little bit of spread. We are getting little bits of the shading that are coming through. I appreciate the tone that's here much more. I really do like this. I just wish that it was coming without the negative effects of the feathering. I could live with the spread on this. The feathering is distracting. Looking at the Fude nib, this is by far the lightest tone on the page, and I don't like this tone at all. It feathers, it spreads, it in general doesn't really look very nice to me. Now, if this is a tone of red that you enjoy, that's great. You're just going to maybe have to uh, experiment to go ahead and figure that out. There's a couple of moments of shading that happen, but barely worth mentioning. Looking at the back of the page, while you see a lot of spots where it's really coming through heavy, it never touched the page underneath. You just can't use the back of this page because of the very deep into the paper, not so much just full ghosting, but it was running a thin line here. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done in an Ampad steno notebook. Looking at the standard nib, it's much lighter than we had on the Clairefontaine. I was curious how the tone of this paper would affect it. Now, the feathering is tiny. It's there, but it's really tiny. I can see you being able to work with it. It does spread a little bit, but again, I do see this as workable and not the end of the world. We're not getting any kind of shading, though. The gold nib is a bit darker than we got with the standard nib. It still has a tiny bit of feathering that's going on, manageable. It still has a tiny bit of spread, but again, manageable here. We're not getting any shading at all. This much darker tone is the part that I care for much more with this. If I was using it, I would probably just try and go for a little drier pen and experiment with that for the tone. Looking at the Fude nib, much lighter than everything else on the page, almost a watermelon kind of color. It does feather, it does spread, it does not shade, it does not appeal to me whatsoever. Looking at the back of the page, you see there is a spot where it touched the page underneath. 
So all of this massive amount of bleeding does potentially corrupt the next page. And that was on the Fude nib. A lot of ghosting. I don't think you could use the back of this page. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a national steno notebook. Looking at the standard Noodler's nib, this paper with this ink looks like a real winner to me. I really like the tone that we're getting there. We get no feather, no spread. We are getting some shading, but for the most part, we're really getting a lot of that darker tone. I'm appreciating this a whole lot. It only has uh, the showings of the lighter tone, which lets you see that shading. Looking at the gold nib, it is in general about the same that we had with the standard nib. It's got mostly that dark tone, but the lighter tone does show up. Like when you see in the word according, it starts a little mid-tone, gets a little lighter, and then into that dark tone. Very nice. We're not getting any feathering. We're not getting any spread. Yes, the shading is there, and this looks really nice. Looking at the Fude nib, we're getting that kind of watermelon tone again. We are getting some feather. We are getting some... I'm going to say there's some spread, but I'm going to take that back because it's the Fude, so it's a little harder to tell. Shading does show up. I think this is a very acceptable uh, performance here. While I say it does feather a tiny bit, they are really tiny feathers, and they are not constantly all over the place. Looking at the back of the page, this spot that I circled touched the page underneath. So it did bleed through in one spot where it touched the next page. I'm surprised with that on this paper. We do get some ghosting, although I think on the majority, you could probably use the back of the page. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Jehirban Rouge Carubier. Here is Noodler's Black Swan English Rose. Here is Pilot Autumn Leaves. Here is Thornton's Red. The next writing sample is done in an Office Depot steno notebook. Looking at the standard Noodler's nib, we see a good solid red tone here. Not the deep dark red that I was enjoying so much, but a really nice red. We're not really getting any feathering. We're not getting any spread. It has a few moments of shading. It's mostly the dark tone with little bits of the lighter tone. I think this looks really good. A real winner on this paper that for the majority of the time hasn't been my favorite. Looking at the gold nib, we're getting much the same that we had in the standard, just a slightly lighter tone as its majority. No real feather, no spread. There is shading, and we're getting a fair balance of its lighter and darker tones. This ink on this paper, really doing very, very well. Thank you. 
Looking at the Fude nib, we get a much lighter tone than we've had on any of the others on this paper. We're not getting any feather, we're not getting any spread, we're getting a very nice shading all the way through. We get that watermelon to that pure red, not that deep dark red, that never really shows up here. But that watermelon to red in shading, I think looks very nice. It's kind of like seeing from the rind to the very sweet part of that watermelon. Looking at the back of the page, we see that we get really no bleed through. Nothing came through and touched the page underneath. And the ghosting is really under control. I believe you could use the back of the page with no real problems. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a blue-black ink by Pelican Edelstein Tanzanite. Here is a gray ink by Mont Blanc there, Oyster Gray. Here is a blue ink by Diamine Misty Blue. Here is a black ink by Noodler's Black Eel, a lubricated ink. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the standard nib, we get a lot of feathering, which we largely expect with this paper. We get spread, which we expect with this paper. We're not getting that super light tone that I was sort of expecting on this, although it is nowhere near as dark as we had with the other papers. I want to say there is a couple of moments of shading that happen, like you see it in the M in Prime, or you see it in the, D, the first D of Minded, but it's not really to speak of. The gold nib is, as a tone, a little bit darker than we had from the standard nib. We still get the feathering, we still get the spread. Now, to be really clear, while it's feathering and it's spreading, this is very much under control, and as long as we don't have any kind of major bleed-through issues, I think this could be a good ink for this paper. We even get a couple of moments where some shading shows itself with this. Nice. The Fude nib has given that much lighter tone that we've become adjusted to with that nib on this paper, still very much there. It feathers, but the feathers are really tiny, they're consistent, given the paper, I think this is fairly good. Yes, I will say there's some spread here, regardless of that Fude nib, because this is much wider than anything else that I was getting the rest of the time. Don't use a Fude nib on copy paper. Looking at the back of the page, there's only a couple of spots where it touched the page underneath, so actually it did incredibly well. It doesn't corrupt that next page. Amazing. Although looking at the back of the page, there's no way you could use the back of the paper here. So what nib and pen do I think is gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? I like the deeper, richer tone that I find from a very wet, fine, or medium nib. So for me, that's really what I would want to use. Now with this, it seems to be much more about the paper than the pen itself. I don't really use a lot of papers most of the time that aren't, isn't for fountain pens, although I do have some that I go to. I can see using this just make sure that you test first that you're going to get a tone that you like. On nice paper, I go with a nice, wet, medium, or fine. Now, on your cheaper papers, I would go with a dry fine, but I would also expect a much lighter tone. I hope you got something out of this video, and if you want to be able to follow me over on Instagram, I'm there as an ink guy. Thanks for watching.